Hi, this is Candy Johnson. I um, made a promise to my Facebook friends that I was going to explain a statement that I made on a um, status update earlier. Uh, the statement that was made was that if you're practicing or you're trying to uh, learn a, the guitar or bass, um, and it probably would be applicable to any type of instrument. Hey, um, hey, Ken. Um, that if you want to uh, really uh, build up your uh, skills, um, I noticed that a lot of people when um, they're learning how to play that they they go from playing one thing to another, either one chord to another or what have you, or trying to do um, different um, riffs. Um, because they're so anxious to um, get going and just doing a whole song or get going and just being able to say, um, I know how to do every riff in this song. Um, but I, I, I gave the advice to not do that. Um, and it's tempting. I've been there learning how to play um the keyboard, um, but I noticed that I became um, more skillful at knowing where the notes was that I wanted to hit by playing the same thing over and over again. Repetition is the best teacher for uh, anything you want to learn, repetition and um, actual, of course, actual application of uh, repetition is the best teacher. Um, so my advice is to um, play the same riff over and over and over again. Now, there are some people that will tell you, no, you play the whole song. No, I would say um, play the same riff, but at different tempos. Um, over and over and over again. And the reason that I said play it at different tempos instead of playing different riffs is because um, when you play it at different tempos, you become more skillful with um, learning um, where your fingers are placed on the guitar or on the instrument um more accurately because when you're playing at different tempos especially if you start off at a slow tempo and build your way up to playing that same riff at a different tempo what happens is you are actually programming your mind to know where your hand should be no matter what tempo you're playing that riff, you're programming your hands where they should be. This will help you um, learn to listen. Okay, when I went up a note, my hands was here. When I went down a note, how my hands were over here. And that will simultaneously teach you how to play your instrument um, without looking at your hands and where they're positioned. If you learn how to play a riff slowly and then build yourself up in tempo. Um, and what happens is along the way when you learn how to play it at a slow tempo very well and become more skillful at playing it at a slow tempo, then you can pick up your speed. Once you pick up your speed, then um, that process has already taught you where your fingers should be placed so you don't have to be looking at your instrument when you play because your your brain is already programmed to know where your fingers are to be placed in position, uh, what's comfor comfortable for you to play that note at whatever speed because you've already practiced it. 
And um, once you learn to do that and do one riff at a time at different tempos, what happens is you'll find that you'll learn that music is very simple. You got high notes, high notes, and you got low notes. So um, that's what is um, you're secretly teaching yourself that if you're not focused on, oh, I want to learn how to um, position my fingers. I want to learn where the high notes are, or what notes is where, and, and and learn how to position my fingers to hit those notes at, at um, the correct timing. Um, then um, you can teach yourself all of those things if you don't focus on those things. And it, it sounds uh, backwards, but I think we hinder ourselves from learning by focusing on too many things at once. Um, my main thing I uh, tell all musicians is you need to be able to hear. You need to be able to hear um, what's going on. Say, for example, you're like, wait a minute. Um, we practiced this song in the key of L flat or F sharp. And um, perhaps that singer is hoarse that day and may need you may need to change something in the song. Even sometimes the drummer have to adjust tempos um, when the when a singer is tired, and maybe a song is maybe a little more upbeat. And, and, but if the singer is tired, they may have to break it down. They'll be able to go ahead on and perform, but to a point where they don't wear themselves out. So um, uh, learning how to play your instruments at different tempos is extremely important um, because it learns you to hear, hear um, while you're playing. And it's very important to learn to hear what's going on because you can't be so caught up in this song supposed to be played in the key of F sharp when you're performing live because um, Real entertainment is being able to adjust to your situation and still rock the house, you know. Um, for me, it's to, to me, if, if, if I see a band performing and they're so worried about we, we practice this this way and, and being so routine when they see that they're, um, whatever it is that they practice is not going over well in the actual performance of that, um act and they don't uh know how to adjust or improvise hi robert hi um harwan i hope i'm pronouncing your name right welcome um so um the learning how to um adjust is a very important part of performing um i had to I have been singing all my life since I, I was five years old. And I'm singing in front of different audiences. I've sang different types of songs. Hey, Robert. Um, and um, what I learned from performing in front of different size audiences and different types of audiences um, what I learned from that is being able to, um, hey, Hollywood from uh, Southern Country Radio, how you doing, hon? And um, I, ooh, I would like to tap Hollywood in, but I don't know how to do that on this thing. I think you, in, do you invite friends to tap, to tap them in? Is that how you do this? Hollywood. I'm going to invite Hollywood. I'm sure he has something to say about um, performances since um, he is always out and about and um, 
patronizing other artists, um, shows, and things of that nature. So uh, you're welcome to come in, put your two cents in, Hollywood. Um, but um, I was talking about uh, the importance of artists um, learning to hear um, how the mood and the energy of the crowd and where you are performing at, you know, it's, it's important when you're practicing to practice doing that so that when you're out and about, you, you're really uh, sensitive um, in hearing when things shift um, in the crowd or the energy. If your energy is going down and then you and you've learned how to um, practice a structure gig, but also learn how to adjust and improvise, um, then you can uh, bring it when you do a live show because uh, most important is not that you perform your act perfectly like you uh, planned it, but it what's most important is that the people in the audience are satisfied when they leave. And um, I've, I've seen a lot of people do very structured and choreographed acts um, and just have no concern um, with crowd engagement or, or paying attention to the, um, the flow of the energy of the crowd, you know. And that's very important when, and when you're a professional entertainer or a professional uh, performer. Now, I know at those big shows, um, a lot of big shows where they have uh, a lot of um, things to distract people on stage, um, they have the props and and then they may have a whole set up there like a movie scene. And it's not necessarily to distract people, but it's, it's to create the, uh, the mood of the show. Um, I think some artists take that for granted. Um, and I've seen people um, come away from paying $250 for a show complaining. And um, for me, I mean, people do how they want to do it. Um, the advice I would give um, is um, don't, don't take those props and all the, the fancy stuff for granted. You want to put on a good show so that... Um, people want to come back and um and they'll experience bias remorse from uh, attending the show that's real talk man um i'm very opinionated when it comes down to music but i'm also very um opinionated towards myself and the, what i put out it's not just um critiquing other people's artistry and you know, trying to find fault in them. I'm just um, very um, particular about music because music to me is very spiritual, especially uh, rock music, funk, soul. Um, those are some very spiritual um, genres to me because um, of what I've seen in the past and in history, um, the artists, the souls of the artists are, are, are poured out into the music and that's what makes it spiritual for me you know and uh i had invited uh hollywood to join in i don't know exactly how this works so um and i'm not being given any more options but I hope what I said can help some a couple of artists that's on the up and coming. You're trying to learn your instruments. Um, Harwan, do you play an instrument, Robert? Howie, I heard you was gonna do some a little recording. But um, I saw one of my Facebook friends practicing, and um, 
and she was like um a little discouraged you know trying to hit the notes and trying to you know get it going but i just wanted to encourage all artists to keep at it if you really love music and and um you really enjoy it if you keep at it you'll definitely get better with time and uh some things can't be learned unless you just do it oh okay okay congress is music robert congress is music and um what's that that's the percussion section that's the rhythm section i reckon and that's definitely important part of the music i love the congo congress i look i'll probably pronounce it wrong so you wouldn't even recognize the whole instrument if i say it but i i, I love congos and um rhythmic most rhythmic music um have some congos in there um especially ethnic music like um uh island music and um the jamaicans and and reggae music all oh, the spanish people oh man they can tear them congas up now don't get it twisted they can wreck them congas i done seen them do it and so that is not an insignificant instrument at all I love music and any anything can um bring joy if that's what you want to do with it. Hey Derry. How you doing? Welcome. Welcome. That's uh uh I think that's one of my new Facebook friends from Texas, I think. You from Texas, right? I'm from Houston, Texas. And um, I always say by way of Louisiana because my people from uh, on my daddy's side from Louisiana and, you know, they good. We good people down there. You know where you at down south? We good peoples. Um, so welcome, welcome. Now I'm a little uh, what you call that? Uh, serene today. Uh, but I'm usually very wow. It didn't get crucial on my page. So hang tight. Make sure you make sure you strap up and put your put your stirrups on when you come over my page now. <laughs> You gotta put your chaps in your stuff so when you come over on my page now. <laughs> oh, you suck it. And, um, yeah, yeah, hold on, guy. That's why I wear these ties. I uh, I, I wear these ties for two pur it's multi purposes for fashion. And I also wear it so when people don't know how to deal with me and they ain't used to uh they ain't used to hanging with me, they can they have something to hold on to. <laughs> hold on, just hold on. I just held them on top. Hold on, then it could be a rough ride. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so laughs> Real talk though. Um, but, um, I just wanted to give a little, a few little pointers. I ain't no, uh, musician, professional, a uh, guru or nothing like that. I stay in my lane. I don't profess to be nothing, um, that I'm not now, but I am good at what I do do. You know, I am very good at what I do do. And so I can speak on that. You know, if it if I if I don't know nothing about it, please believe I'm gonna shut the hell up and let the people talk that do. You understand? And so, um, there are some people who are, are professionals um, by trade, 
um, that would definitely agree with what I the advice that I've given, um, because they they know what I'm talking about and they understand and have experienced it and um, practice um, and built up their their skills, hearing skills. See, I see a lot of people that want to be aspiring producers, right? Such as myself. But I see a lot of aspiring producers that have uh, a lot of uh, concern about I want the latest um, system. I want the biggest system. I want the most knobs on mine or, or the, the biggest interface and this and that. Um, but None of that impresses me um, in particular um, just because people have instruments because anybody can buy uh, a lot of equip fancy equipment um, in as long as they had the money to pay for it. Um, and people will assume that just because um, they may even have a paper um, from a school that they went to for music, that that automatically make them a, um, an expert at making music or creating music. I don't give much credit or much weight to pieces of paper. Not much. Especially when it comes down to music. I don't give any credit or any weight or even acknowledge pieces of paper because papers don't tell what your skill level is. Um and so um if 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 someone tells me that they are an expert at something, I'm gonna need to see some proof of that. And if I listen to their music and I don't feel nothing, then the way that I look at it is you're an expert to everybody but me. And I have a right, you know, to my opinion, so do you. Um, and so if you consider them as an expert, that's your business. But for me, um, Anyone that I'm going to look up to or uh, give credit to in that capacity to call them an expert, they're going to have to come with it. Um, I have a song called Be About It. And, and in that song, it says, I ain't going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it, you know. And it's in um, part of the lyrics in that song, it say fake. Fake ass rappers rapping about L for B this and S my D that. You can sell a million records, but your shit is still whack. And Red Fox will fake a heart attack to keep from listening to that. Um, I wrote those lyrics because that's exactly how I feel in the music industry. That I don't care how many Grammys you have, I don't care how many awards you have, whatever um, music awards. I don't care where you. What where he was at on the line on the billboards. If I didn't see art in you or creativity coming directly from you, then I don't give you that honor or that respect of idolizing you as an artist. Period. I don't care who you no, I just don't do it. And on the same on the flip side of that as well, there are some artists that having never been on the charts nowhere in the lineup that I have the highest respect for and um, look up to them um, because they have, they come with it, you did, you know. You got to come with it in this game. I mean, you can't um, be half-stepping and hiding behind a bunch of fancy instruments because one day them instruments gone uh give out on you and you gonna be looking shame because you were so told uh dependent on those instruments hiding um your lack of skill or whatever and then that's what a shame you but when you putting in work to build your skill up 
the instruments can go out, but you can still rock the house because it's not about the instrument uh, when it comes down to to uh, performing and entertaining. Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. Um, real talk, though, I I want I love to encourage artists to do their very best and nothing less because that's what I'm going to do as well. I ain't claiming to be the best of everything, but I know I'm going to come with it with whatever I come with. Thank you, love. Robert Santos in the house. Robert Santos, I appreciate your love. And nah. Uh, and hey, nah, I appreciate your love, love, hon. He be over there wrecking on them turntables. Yeah. I I I got some favorite DJs. Howie, uh uh Hollywood over at Southern Country Radio. That's my favorite country station on, <laughs> on Facebook. And I got uh and Robert over there in uh uh shucks i forgot his name uh but um i got a couple of djs kareem yeah i'll be um looking out for y'all i love music yes exactly you got to feel the music you got to feel the music absolutely i went to a club once and I was trying to hype the DJ up to play some things that get the people on the dance floor. And he refused to do it. And he told me that he had some kind of deal with the owner not to play good music to keep people buying drinks. Um, and I won't disclose what um, establishment that is, but I know that's some, some um, crooked shit going on there. And it's so uh, detrimental um, to the establishment. And I don't think they even realize it because um, they uh, was complaining at the same time right after they was, uh, a guy was telling me that they do that. They was complaining because they said that a fight broke out and every night fights break out and they get fined and all this kind of stuff and they don't realize they bringing it on themselves um trying to pump people up with alcohol instead of getting people on the dance floor where they can buy a few drinks dance a little bit off buy a few drinks you know you're gonna make the money just do right you're gonna make the money especially if people know good music is being played there and then the hype gets out because i'm definitely a hyper club and um it's other people like me that will do it as well and and they'll pack their house out and that's how you make money not by getting people drunk where they're so uh inebriated that um people with bad you know people getting bad attitudes and wasting drinks on other people and fights break out and you know i just couldn't believe um when he verbalized that to me i know stuff like that goes on but when he verbalized it so blatantly that that was um, the purpose of him not playing good music, I was ready to go. I was just ready to go. You know, I've never heard of a DJ not wanting um, to please the crowd and being satisfied. And he was, he was bragging about it, you know, and I was saying, wow. Um, but anyway, I appreciate the love. Thank you, uh, Robert, for uh, coming in and uh, showing love. And um, I'm going to end this broadcast. But in the meantime, in between time, as always, I say keep it real or take your ass back to fantasy land. <laughs>